Good afternoon. Make sure I'm plugged in. Welcome to my daily broadcast. This is Sunday afternoon, hence again casual attire, the weekend editions. Um, this is episode number 654. And the topic today is powerful me- women versus powerful men. Why dating sucks. It's time I talk about this and more. Um, I was going to jump into it. It's like, no, before I jump into it, let, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, what I'm about, and why I do this. And then we'll get into it. So roll up your sleeves. Um, my name is Barry, it's Barry Selby. I'm a best selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful, and also regular women, and all sorts of women, create balance in love, life, and business. Because I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine, is what drives this, and also what drives these talks that I've done now for over two years called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. I've abbreviated it down to MFTM, but that's what it stands for Messages from the Masculine inspiring your feminine heart so today we're episode number 654 yippee and from some observations today actually some observations over my last 25 years i've had some conclusions i've reached about the powerful men powerful women paradigm for want of a better word because we're in a world now and in fact i was talking to somebody about this this morning i think yes i was just checking and yesterday there's actually multiple conversations how Women have been, and let me, let me back up a second. I'm going to generalize this a little bit before I get too far in, so you know that I'm not saying every single person, but generally speaking. So when it's about women and men, I'm talking about straight women and men, and also I'll go into deeper levels about the levels of that as well. That's enough, pre- that's enough premise. Let me dive in. So, first of all, the culture we live in, this wonderful thing called the Western world, particularly the business world, is designed, excuse me, has been designed, built, and utilized by men for generations. And then after the sexual revolution, women got involved in that same arena, but the arena didn't change. So women had to basically fit into a paradigm that wasn't theirs. And for the last few, I won't say exactly many, decades, there has been an ongoing challenge to women of how to be functional in the business world and still remain women. And I'm gonna break that down in more detail in a moment. The dating arena, because I was a, <laughs> I was gonna say I was a victim of it. I was a participant in it and a little bit of a victim of it too. Um, in the <laughs> I know, stories I can tell. Where basically women and men were very competitive. The business world as structured for the last say several decades has been a competitive environment that was built by men who were naturally competitive to challenge themselves and to force growth. Now, women, when jumped into that, have basically had to mimic and copy the men to succeed in that arena. Very few women, unfortunately, have succeeded by not doing that. Most women have been very, um, I'm going to say this, enmeshed in this world automatically because they women have been Everybody's been educated, let's say not women, but everyone's been educated to say that when you're in the business world, you must do this, 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 and this, and this way. So a lot of women have had to do things like the men, because that's what they saw before them, to succeed in the business world. I think I made that point clear enough. The business world has been the template that has ruined all these relationships, because what's happened is the transference, I should, no, let me say another way. The way that women have learned how to be in the business world has carried over, has translated, has automatic, no, 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 it's not the way I want to say it, has become something that men and women have basically danced around in relationship. In business, men and women were competing with each other. And in the dating arena, women and men were competing with each other. In the dating, on the dating scene, in happy hours, in dating apps, women have unfortunately been boxed into the same mindset that men are, which is not right. It's not as much not right. It's not functional. There's a discrepancy. No, it's not word. Well, it's not discrepancy. There's a. There's some bad assumptions going around. Let me be blunt about it. That many women have been fooled into thinking is the truth. I'm, be careful. I'm careful. I'm afraid. I'm rephrasing as I'm thinking this. So just bear in mind as I'm sort of letting it come through. We have a a, um, a culture that is extremely patriarchal, like, duh, that was a surprise. 
but also that's been extremely dysfunctional for women because the society hasn't been set up to support women, as is pretty obvious of the way things are done with laws in different states and country uh, laws and federal uh, rules and all this other stuff. So I'm not going to get into that right now, unless it comes back. But in the dating arena, in relationship arena, again, talking about straight men, straight women, to make this easier for my languaging, because otherwise if I cover the whole gamut, it can be really messy. Although I might have a little diversion coming up. We'll see. I've got something showing up on the over here. <laughs> Welcome to my mind. It does strange things. The dating arena has basically come to be a few different um, positions. For men, being the tough guy seemed to be the way that they were trained because in business you've got to be tough and competitive and beat the other person out and not be emotional. Women have unfortunately a large, especially the entrepreneurial business women, have been trained to do the same thing. So when it comes to dating, you've got two powerful, unemotional, selfish, competitive people attempting to date each other. You can see how problematic that is. The problem with that as well is not only is that not functional, but the options that people consider are also not functional, which I'm going to explain. So men and women are doing the same thing, which is being combative, com competitive, and unemotional isn't healthy for relationships. That's why dating sucks, hence the title. But also, when women think they should be nice to men, men don't treat them well, generally speaking, and women don't get what they want. And, and this old piece coming, oh, okay, that's gonna come through. All right, so I'm gonna, let me break up these down first before I dive into the big piece that's like, here's the silver platter with everything on it. So women basically had, if they were tough and strong, they were competitive with the men, or if they softened to be nice, they'd be treated as basically as um, wenches to be using old vernacular, like be basically, not appreciated or respected or equal, just used for whatever men want to use them for. There were a couple other options too, because I know that some of this is my own experience, where women held out strong enough where men basically would become, no, let me say another way. I, I went too far down the road on that one. Where women have been were in charge and were running things. So they took charge and actually were asking the men out. And some men, this is one of them, got lazy because we didn't need to effort and try and court and do those things that traditionally men are supposed to do because the women did all the work. So you end up with a strong, powerful woman who's running the show, getting these done, and a beta, relaxed, casual, lazy man. Yes, I'm outing myself on that one. That's how I used to be. Also, it doesn't work. So there's three, three main, at least maybe three, maybe four, let's see, three main things I'm talking about here that make dating, relating relationships highly dysfunctional. There is a solution, stay tuned, I'll get to that in a second. The big illusion, no, it's not illusion in the white word. The big assumption people are living under, have been living under, still are living under, is that's the way the life is supposed to be. Because the old paradigm was basically men were, the court, were, were courting the women, the women weren't working, women were taken care of, but that's no longer the situation. So now we're this new stage, which is basically where women and men are banging heads, competing, and relationships kind of suck. There is another option which I'm going to introduce to you, which is not that new. It's been out for a while, but a lot of people are still not aware of it. This is part of why I talk about how I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, by the way, so I'll break that down. For women, being tough, competitive like the men is one option. Or being the nice, soft woman for the man is another option. There's a third option. Ladies, listen up. The place that most women haven't gone yet, Now I've talked about this in other ways before, but I want to give it to you in this way, is the feminine mystique, the feminine energetic, the feminine sexuality, the feminine energy, there's enough labels for it, is a gift that women have, sorry, a gift that most women, I've got to be careful not using every woman, the gift that most women have, but is untapped. Women have not been informed that it's okay to trust their feminine because most women have been told or the most cultural things talk about feminine is being weak because feminine is associated with being female which is associated with being the weaker sex nothing could be further from the truth let me give you a couple of s ideas for a moment first of all um you know it's not father nature it's mother nature nature is feminine 
just to be clear on that thing. So nature ain't no wimp, and nor is the feminine. Secondly, um, well, let's put it this simply this way. Every single person on the planet came from a woman. Men don't give birth. Like, that's a surprise. But the thing about it is women handle so much power, so much pain, so much, so much transformation that they're not given credit for. So I'm saying, ladies, I get, I understand, I appreciate, and I respect what you've been through, what you go through, what you do, and who you are. That's why I talk about being a passionate champion of the feminine again and again and again and again every single day. And so what I'm speaking to here is that for ladies who are watching this, especially who are wondering how to be in a better relationship, to bring it back to the, to the beginning, the power that women have when they're in their feminine is to be in a place that has flexibility and flow, so it's not strong and tough and boxed in, has a flow and dynamic energy to it, but has the power of Mother Nature behind it. The way that one of my mentors talks about this is that when a woman's putting in a, in a full in a feminine and is looking for the man she wants to be with, there's a deep yearning, almost, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Almost dire yearning for the man she's been wanting to be with. However, when any man appears who does not align with that, does not support that, does not stand in his true masculine with that, will be cut off by a ma will have his head cut off by the massive sword she carries. So the feminine is not weak and the feminine, the feminine is not helpless by any means. But the feminine has this depth of yearning and depth of embracing the world that most women haven't tapped into yet. Men, to counterpoint that, the old tough, strong, get it done competition, screw everybody else to do it my own way, that way of doing things doesn't work either. What I'm inviting for both genders is stepping into our authenticity. So for women, the feminine is the natural way for most women to be in. But it's a very powerful place, and I'll break that down in a second a bit more, but just switch to men for a second. For the men, there's a big difference between macho and masculine. The culture we live in, the society we've lived in, and, and the business world we've lived in, is driven by machismo. Balls, you know, got the balls to get it done, take, you know, take care of business, screw everybody else, make it happen. The masculine is a much deeper place to be for men that is stronger than the machismo I talked about. But it's also much more compassionate and also caring of his fellow man and his fellow woman. It's a different place to be in, which is much bigger, but also much more humble. It's an interesting dichotomy in a way, but it's both of them are available at the same time. So to give you some... Um, archetypes to latch these onto for the woman when you choose to be in your feminine when you own your feminine power it isn't and i'm going to speak to some of the energy in here it's not about the goddess energy even that's part of it a lot of women go the goddess movement is too this is too that for me the goddess energy is a stepping stone for most women who've been tough and been in the business world moving to the goddess is a step in the right direction to see that there's a lot more softness more fluidity more flow more movement more lightness available to them but and excuse me and not but when you as a woman realize that that's a stepping stone to something deeper you realize the fact that the power you have is a spiritual authority a spiritual power that is so much bigger than you ever had when you were trying to be like the men you'll never go back the way I use it in archetypal language or the way that I'm choosing to use it is the divine feminine, the fully embraced, power, empowered, inspired feminine, is like a high priestess. It has the royal lineage of, of queen combined with the spiritual connection of the true goddess. But I mean like the goddess Kali. The power that comes with that is massive. And that, for women, is a place to remember where your true power lies, which is deep inside. Now, shifting gears to the men for a second. The level of depth the masculine has, and I'm going to borrow some languaging from um, Warrior Sage and from Alison Armstrong, the teacher, and David Data as well, because I studied all three of them. The true expression of the masculine in fully empowered is a blend of the warrior and the king, at least the way I interpret it. It has power and authority to get things, sorry, it has power and um, courage to get things done with the authority and leadership of a benevolent king. And so together, that energetic is very complementary, doesn't compete, 
doesn't fight except together towards something but also it has that together creates a full spectrum a gestalt so to speak of intimacy and connection that is embracing all parts of the human dynamic what I recognized when I was in my dating life where I wasn't stepping into my masculine is I was choosing women or I was letting women choose me who weren't in their feminine masculine and fe masculine chooses feminine feminine chooses masculine they don't choose anything outside of that because that was stepping out of their true nature and I know now from experiencing both sides of the conversation from before and after how much more powerful relationships can be when men are in the masculine and women in their feminine and I'm giving you just a glimpse of this I have some book recommendations I can put it, I can give you if you're interested and you want to find out more about how I can talk about how, what, I, what I'm talking about here. Well, there are some teachings that I'm very passionate about because I've studied with them for the last 12 years. So this, I want to make this point clear, is that there is a way of being in a relationship that is respecting both opposites, that's deeply embracing our own authentic natures. And again, I was saying, I was saying most people because there are exceptions to the rule. I'm not going to use them here. But the true authority we bring in our own authentic masculine, authentic feminine, and I will be in a little PS about gay relationships in a moment for that matter, is what creates healthy relationships. Now in gay relationships, it's no different really, in the sense that it's not, obviously not men and women, in a gay relationship it's men and men and women and women. However, the masculine feminine polarity still exists. In fact, for sexual chemistry to happen, you need to have a masculine feminine polarity. That's true in homosexual relationships, in lesbian relationships, in any sort of relationship where there's chemistry. Because chemistry is formed by the polarity between masculine and feminine. Which is one reason, as a little, little sidebar, why, if, why it's possible to renew and restore chemistry if it fades in a relationship. Because it takes each partner, the reason, let me give you the sidebar, it's a little piece of that, a little bonus, a little PS. If your relationship is losing its chemistry, it doesn't have the juice anymore, if you still care about each other, it's likely because you both have got out of alignment or you've both, um, disconnect is not the right word. You, you, you've, you've unplugged, that's a good word. You both unplugged your natural masculine feminine polarity. If you wanna recharge your chemistry, reconnect back to your authentic masculine, your authentic feminine, as you are aligned naturally, and it will recharge the batteries and it'll create more polarity again. That will just turn up the juice, it'll give you more chemistry and the sex will be a lot better. You're welcome. I think I'll leave it there. There's more to it. This is, this is basically a lot of the depth of my work with my clients because I do work with women to really help them attract healthy relationships. And this is part of the work is really owning their feminine. Because ladies, when you want a healthy relationship, a really empowered, inspiring, authentic, rich relationship, you want a man who's in his masculine and he will only be that way if you're on your feminine. It's this requirement for the counterpoints, masculine and feminine, to work together. So... I'm going to put a link in the comments for a discovery session for the ladies who want to get some help and this and want to talk further because there's more to it than just this. There's a lot of realignment and, and uh, parts integration and healing and lots of other things along the way because I ain't a dating coach. My work is to help you attract the relationship you desire, deserve and are worthy of and we can talk about that. So I'll put the link in the comments. If this has any questions, if, if this has inspired you, great. If, it's got, if it provokes any questions in you, please put them below in the comments. This is a Facebook Live I do every day that will then go onto YouTube, so I'll give you the links where you can find me. I do this at 5 p.m. Pacific time, excuse me, 5 p.m. Pacific time every seven, every day of the week. Um, occasionally I move it if there's other things going on, but generally it's every, it is every day, definitely. So you can catch me on my Facebook page, personal page, which is uh, Barry Selby. You can watch the replays on Facebook on my business page, which is barryselby.author. You can then also watch me on YouTube. My channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and the replays are under a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. This is my passion, this is my work, this is why I do all these broadcasts, that's why I'm number 654. I do this for my health, and I hope they do this for your health. So if this has helped you, I let me know. If you have any questions about this, please let me know that as well. I'm gonna put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me, because telling you this stuff is great, but if you don't use it, you won't get what you want. So. Check it out from check it out. Check my work out. Test take me for a test drive, so to speak. And, through, and again, put the link in the comments. And I hope this has been of help to you. This is this is something for a lot of people they don't understand. And I've been studying this for over this part for over 12 years, and it really has become visceral for me because I really get how powerful it is. So hopefully you've got a taste of that little a little taste of that power in this talk. So I appreciate you watching. I hope you got some value from this. And if you have any questions, reach out to me.
with that, I thank you for being with me. I'll be back in tomorrow, tomorrow again at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, take care of yourself. And consider for yourself where your alignment is. Where are you aligned? Are you naturally masculine, naturally feminine? Are you not sure how to get there? Are you running back the wrong way around? Who knows? That's up to you to answer. If you want to let me know that, you can. But if you want to just think about it for yourself, that's your choice. So thanks for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Same time, same channel. Bye.